Okay, so in this tutorial I'm going to do a quick demonstration on how to create uh, corrective morphs and how to hook those up to joint rotations so that you can have corrective shapes on your, uh, on your rig. Uh, I know this has been shown in a couple different ways, but this one's going to be all within Moto and you don't have to go to ZBrush or anything like that to create your, your shapes. Um, so let's get right down to it. The first step that I need to do is I need to create a morph map. So I'm going to select on my mesh, go to my lists, and you'll notice if I drag these down or up, okay, I'm actually going to delete this. Yes, I'm going to create a new morph map called Elbow Fix, okay, and it's just going to be relative morph map. And now that I've created that, I'm going to right click on it and say Add Morph Influence. And what you'll see in here is that now I have a morph influence and in my arm mesh I've got a morph influence assigned to my arm mesh. Um, and if I go to properties you'll notice it says now enabled and 100% let's just do this, let's kill the transform um, it's enabled at 100% and so I can go ahead and sculpt. Now what I want to do is I want to create the sculpt at in the posed shape so I'm actually going to grab the joint and I'm going to rotate it Okay, so I'm going to go transform and go negative 90 so that it's at this right angle here. Okay, I'm going to hide this morph influence right here and that just gets rid of that big locator. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through and I'm going to sculpt. I want to sculpt this to, to correct it. So I'm going to hit tab to go out of subdivide mode. Click on my morph influence. Okay, Go to my list and make sure that my elbow fix is highlighted because that's the one I'm going to be working on. Okay. And then I'm just going to go to my Sculpt Tools, which are right here. Okay, and I'm just going to grab Move. And I'm going to kind of smooth this stuff out a bit. There we go. Drag these down a bit. Smooth this out just a bit. So I can see everything. Okay, smooth this out, drag these ones down. I'm trying to get kind of an elbow shape at the bottom. Okay, so it's kind of a little more, if I hit tab, it's a little pointed now, which is good. I'm not trying to be perfect. If I wanted to be perfect, I'd take a lot longer, but now I got everything kind of splayed out so I can sculpt on it better. And basically what I want to do is I just want to sculpt this so it looks decent. So. Just going to sculpt this stuff up. Okay. Too big. Just going to get this here. Bring this one up a little bit. And then pull these together, and I can use my tangent pinch to kind of do that. Oops, I forgot this little underside here. So I'm going to grab these, pull them together a bit. Like this. Kind of get it how I want it. Use the tangent pinch, kind of just drag over it a bit, tighten that stuff up so there's a nice fold in between there. Smooth this out just a little bit. And this. And this. Oh, move. There we go. So now I've got a decent arm that doesn't intersect on itself. And I'm going to bulge the bicep just a little bit here, okay, and maybe lift that up just a little bit, maybe thicken the arm just a tiny bit. So now I've got this, this nice shape here for my arm in the bent mode. Okay, so I'm 90 degrees, it's bent. I've just sculpted my arm. Let me get rid of this. So you can see it looks good. So my morph map is there, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, click on my elbow, go back to my properties, and zero out my rotation. 
So now it went back, but you'll notice this happening. And all that is is just a refresh bug. Um, and so I just hide the morph influence and then turn it back on. Now what you'll notice here, this is the morph shape. Um, this is the morph target that we've just created. Now the nice thing about this is versus something like Maya is I don't have to duplicate the mesh and sculpt on a mesh to make it look like this, hoping that I can sculpt this. Um, I can just sculpt it in posed form and I can get it exactly the way I want and then it recalculates this for me. So it's really nice. So with my morph influence selected and my joint here, I'm going to actually connect them so that uh, the rotation of the joint drives the morph influence. So I'm going to do that by going to animate channel links. And let me shrink this down so you guys can see it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the elbow uh, locator for the joint. And I'm also going to drive the morph influence. So what I want to do is I want to hook up the rotation of the joint in the Y to the strength of the morph influence right here. Okay, so I'm just going to check rotation Y and I'm going to ch check strength. And make sure you don't check rotation Y, rotation zero, because that's the setup. Um, that's the setup location of the joint and not the rotation of the joint. Um, that's the zero, basically the bind pose. So I've got those two selected and I don't want to hit just add link because if I do direct link, it'll just feed whatever the value in rotation Y is into the strength and I don't want that. But I want it to be a relationship. So I select those two and say add link. And now you'll notice that under the morph influence, there's this thing called a relationship. And this relationship, if I click on it and then I hit C, it's going to say no channel selected, but hit it again and it shows up. This is showing me the relationship between the morph influence and the rotation of the joint. So when the ro this is saying when the rotation Y is zero, the strength is at 100, but I want it at zero, so I'm just going to click on 100 and type in zero. This little box turns yellow, which means you've now keyed or you've now set something. Do you want to key it? And you click it and say yes. And now I have that key. And then rotation Y, when it's at negative 90, I want the strength to be 100%. And then click that. And now if I go between that, you'll notice that that shape is now keyed to the joint rotation. And if you want to see this on a graph and how it works, you go to the graph. And what you'll notice here is this is my strength. This is my rotation. So when my rotation is at 0, the strength is at 0. When my rotation goes up to negative 90, my strength is at 100. And there's a nice even ease out or even ease in ease out uh, on that. So um, if I click and drag in this rotation, you'll notice that it moves pretty good and then it kicks in and then it bulges out. But the diff the problem is, is that it's already doing it right here. And with an arm that thin, it's kicking in way too soon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it about there bring up my graph editor, and then I don't want this morph kicking in until probably about negative 30, maybe negative 25. Okay, and you'll notice as I drag that, this changes, and it still looks good right there, okay? So now it says, as long as I'm within this, this range, don't kick in, but once I hit negative 25, start to kick in and then go forward, okay? So now when I rotate it, you'll notice Nothing happens, nothing happens. Now it's starting to kick in, and boom, there's the bulge, the full bulge right there, okay? Now, what happens if I want to go further? Uh, well, I only sculpted it to negative 90, um, and so if I go past negative 90, you'll notice on my graph editor that it's just flat. If I go back to 110 degrees, it's the same value, so it's not going to change. So what I want to do is I want to set one more keyframe um, at negative 120 and when it's negative 120 I want to set it at 130 percent you'll notice it changed right there I want to set the key now I've got three keys okay and I'm going to switch between them yep there we go okay so this just wrote or this just cycles between your different keys and if I go to my graph now you'll notice I've got negative 25 I've got negative 90 and I've got negative 120 now this one, I may want to just change it a little bit. Uh, 
smooth it out. Okay. There we go. So now, as I rotate between them, it kicks in, hits it at 90, and then over overshoots a little bit. Okay. Which is what I want. And that way, if I ever overshoot ne negative 90, uh, the shape will continue and it won't just stop and look weird. You want it to kind of flow past. So you always want to go further than you think you need to go. Okay. But that's it. Now I have my um, sculpt hooked up to my arm. Um, and even though that's it for one joint, trying to do this for multiple joints, if not multiple axes for multiple joints, is going to be pretty crazy. Um, and I hope that in the future that we can have a quick uh, workflow for this where you just basically right click on a bone, say create corrective shape, and it just does all this stuff for you. Um, I mean, right now in ACS, Lucas has uh, some really cool ways of doing it in that. But when you want to set it up manually like this, it takes a little while to do. So um, just to review, first, create your, your morph map. Second, apply it to your mesh. Then pose your skeleton for that joint. Um, and then sculpt your mesh to make it work. Then create the channel links with a relationship and then key it correctly. So those are basically the steps that you have to go through. So I hope this helps somebody out there uh, who's trying to figure this out. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. Okay, thanks.